Howdy Pokemon trainers and welcome back to Pokemon. Today I'm going over another episode of the anime titled The Pika Kahana. Well, it starts off a little bit weird. Ash is actually training for the Indigo League. He actually dragged along Brock and Misty with him too. But after a car goes by blinding Ash due to its emissions, Ash wanders out in the middle of traffic and, well... He causes a little bit of an accident. Everyone starts yelling, everyone starts screaming, everyone starts bickering, but Officer Jenny shows up and helps to get traffic moving again. But Ash is more worried about why there is so much traffic. Officer Jenny goes into a backstory and explains about something of an awesome surfboarder jabbing a rock with a flag, which now that flag has turned into a national monument that every surfer in hundreds of miles of here come to try and challenge that guy and get their flag on top of that rock as well. And everyone's coming because the wave is on its way again. It comes every few dozen years or so. Well, Ash uses this as his opening to do something stupid and try to take up surfing to be the best. Well, Misty knew his training wasn't going to last long. Well, as Ash is getting out there, after the first wave, he twists his leg and he starts to go under. Luckily, this man and his Pikachu come to save him. I'm not sure if it was out of the goodness of their hearts or whatever, but they end up saving him and taking him back to their house, where Ash recovers with no problem. Well, the guy kind of... Tells Ash he shouldn't have been out there, but he accepts that Ash wanted to be a surfer. And he starts telling Ash some stories, and they get into a chat. And after one glimpse at this photo, we go into another flashback about how he used to be a major fan of that famous surfer from earlier. He even tried surfing so much that that surfer dude took an interest in him. He was even there that day when that surfer plunged his flag into the rock. But after he did it, the surfer gave him his surfboard and then sailed off into the horizon to surf new seas. Explain this though. How can he surf new seas if he no longer has his surfboard? Long story short, the guy tried to surf the Humunga Dunga himself, but he failed and tried giving up surfing. But luckily to the Pikachu that we saw coming to him in the most peculiar of ways by the sea, he found a way to re-enjoy surfing and teach himself to love it all over again. And that was the end of the flashback. Ash and Brock are amazed, and so was Misty, because apparently she joined in halfway through the story. But all of a sudden, we hear squealing from both Ash's and his Pikachu. They both go running to see what the problem is, and without any doubt in our mind, we know who's taking the Pikachu. It's Team Rocket, and they're making their escape. There's just one problem. It's Gyarados breeding season. And let's just say they don't like to be bothered. So I hope you guys can get out of there fast enough. Oh, nope, Hyper Beam. You're in a whole lot of trouble. And Team Rocket learns this out the hard way, as they keep getting blasted at. But eventually even Team Rocket ends up taking the major hit and being blown to smithereens. But thanks to the explosion, Ash and our fellow heroes find where the Pikachu are at. Bulbasaur is luckily able to save Ash's Pikachu, but the other one falls into the ocean. Our surfer buddy goes after him and luckily saves him. But due to the storm, Ash and our heroes have to leave and get back to shore before they go under, capsize if you will. Well, all of a sudden we see the sea get flat around the surfer and his Pikachu. And we hop back to our heroes, where they're actually standing on the ridge, because Humunga Dunga's on the way. And we see that it's a lot bigger than last time. 
but all of a sudden we see that the surfer is actually riding Hamunga Dunga, just like his idol. And just like his idol, he has his flag at hand and shoves it into the rock. Now there's two people up there, and he lived on just like his idol did. Ash is ecstatic, and he is proud of it, but he's going to pass on the tradition, just like his idol did, and give his surfboard to someone else. And, well, with that, it was the end of the episode. I thought the plot was a little bit, well, it wasn't generic, but it was definitely a fun episode to watch. There was definitely details in there that made it an interesting episode. Long story short, I'm giving it a 17. But with that, it's on to Pokemon time. Well, we got to see Pikachu and Togepi and Meow and a whole buttload of Gyarados, but that really only technically gave us four Pokemon. I'm giving this episode a score of three. Not exactly what I would call a award-winning progress there, but it's now on time for opposition. Well, I want to give all the credit to Team Rocket for being the main antagonist of the episode, but they were pitiful compared to Mother Nature, or more or less the ocean itself. Not only did it nearly kill Ash in the beginning of the episode, but he was luckily saved by this dude, but it put everyone in danger yet again near the end by nearly capsizing the boat. I'm giving this episode a 23 for opposition. Congratulations, but no one can truly beat Mother Nature. So, I can't exactly congratulate a, our heroes for not beating the impossible. Well, with that out of the way, it's time for hero progress. He started off pretty well, but he soon got into a funk where he started trying to surf. Yeah, Ash, you're not a good surfer. You nearly killed yourself. I'm gonna give yourself, well... I'm giving you a six. You did start out well by training. I don't know how much progress you got in, but you did train. But now on to entertainment. Well, we got to see a new side of Ash, a more determined one. We got to see more friendly faces that ensure that everyone in the Pokemon world is relatively nice, well, unless you belong to one of the many villainous groups. We got to see plenty of black backstories and we even got to see the guy finally reach the same heights his idol did. It was a great episode, but I'm giving it a score of 16 because well over pretty much half of the episode was just one big flashback. Well, I wouldn't really be against it if it was about one of the main characters, not a side character that we'll never see again. But... With that, it's finally time to get to the chart. Well, plot we had at 17, Pokemon time was a 3, opposition was a 23, hero progress was really only a 6, and leaving us for entertainment was a 16, giving us a 65 out of 100 for total. Not exactly what I would call a bad score for the episode. It had its problems and it definitely had its upsides. I would have definitely enjoyed the backstory to deal a lot more with our heroes and less about a random single appearance character. But when it came down to progress, there was a lot of things we could have done to improve this episode for the character. Pokemon time, we were at the beach, throw in some magic harp or other Pokemon jumping out of the water just for a split second or something. But with that, it's all the comments I really got to complain about this episode. It definitely wasn't the best, but I wouldn't call it the worst episode I've ever seen. But with that, it's the end of my episode. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching, and keep on catching Pokemon Trainers.